All right, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Stefan Kraber. I'm co-founder and CEO of a company based in Brisbane called Amazon. Great to be here, and uh, hopefully I'll share some uh, interesting uh, experiences that we've had with using Velodyne products to automate drone flights and uh, provide mapping capability. So like I said, we're a, we're a company based in Brisbane, Australia. We're a startup, a VC-backed startup. We're just over 12 months old now. And our vision is to automate the collection and analysis of data in challenging GPS-denied environments, primarily using LiDAR. So if you're, if you're in this booth, then I assume you're familiar with the concepts of LiDAR. And as you'll see around, LiDAR has been used for a while in autonomous driving solutions, um, very commonly used on cars for navigation um, and to help automate vehicles. Might also be aware that LiDAR has also been used on drones for a while um, as a mapping payload. So in this, in, in this application, you mount a LiDAR to a drone, you fly around and generate LiDAR maps or 3D maps. And in this case, the LiDAR is typically acting as a passive payload, so it's not controlling or automating the drone at all. And the mapping usually requires a GPS and INS system to figure out exactly where the uh, LiDAR is at every point in time. So what we've done at Emerson is take these two concepts and put them together in one solution. So we've developed a, a payload which is called Hovermap um, using the VLP16. So this, this LiDAR basically attaches to the bottom of a drone. As you can see, we've got one up, up, up top there. Um, once it's attached to the drone, it provides a couple of advanced features to the drone. Um, it acts as a collision avoidance sensor using the LiDAR data. It also allows the drone to fly without GPS, so it can fly in GPS-denied environments. It also allows the drone to um, conduct advanced autonomous missions. And it's also a mapping device, so as the drone is flying, it's generating these 3D point clouds. So it's a very unique product. It's the only thing on the market that is a two-in-one autonomy and LiDAR mapping payload for drones. As you'll see uh, up on, up on the, the drone up there and in the video, Another unique thing we do is actually rotate uh, the LiDAR, and this helps to give us an extended field of view, so it provides a spherical field of view around the drone. Um, this is important for two reasons. First of all, if you're, if you're mapping in areas where you need to map above and below the drone, that extended field of view allows you to map in all directions. And obviously, if you're flying around complex structures, like underneath a bridge or inside a mine, you need to avoid obstacles in all directions. So by rotating the, the Velodyne, um, we, we generate this spherical field of view for, uh, for drones. A couple of key specs, like I said, we're using the Velodyne VLP16. We use the, the light version of this, um, which has the same specs as the, the regular VLP16, except it is lighter. Um, so that's 300,000 points per second with up to 100 meter range. Um, provides dual intensity sorry, dual return and intensity values. And on board, we can store this data for up to 12 hours. Um, we connect to an operator via a couple of uh, wireless links. And the whole package is only 1.8 kilograms, which means it can be used on lighter dr drones. And this is really thanks to the weight, um, sort of minimal weight of the, of the puck light. Um, this is really a game-changing sensor in, fact in, in drones where every gram counts to help extend your, your flight time. So like I said, it's a SLAM-based mapping system. Um, if you're not familiar with SLAM, it basically is an algorithm which allows you to map without using GPS and allows you to map while moving. So it's uh, obviously a, a key uh, capability that's needed on a drone which is moving. Um, if GPS is available, we can use that to georeference the maps, put it in a world coordinate frame, and we, we output standard uh, 3D point cloud formats that can be used in a number of third-party applications. In terms of autonomy, what the, the device t basically does is provide uh, a virtual bubble around the drone, and that prevents an operator from flying too close to, um, to structures, and you can change the size and the shape of that bubble while the drone is flying if you need to get close into to structures. It also regulates the speed and uh, position of the drone without GPS, so we're using the SLAM algorithm in real time to control the drone and uh, make it safe and easy to fly. So as you can see, it's compatible with a couple of different drones. So this is an M210 from DJI. Um, that's an M600 from DJI. And it is compatible with, uh, with other drones as well. 
One of the great things about Hovermap is how simple and easy to use it is. So in terms of getting it set up to fly and um, run on a drone, basically attach it with a quick release mechanism, connect power, press the, press the button and fly. Um, so you can get up and flying within 60 seconds. After the flight, you download data to our processing app, and that um, allows you to generate these uh, 3D point clouds. And the processing time is about three times as long as the flight time. Another really great feature is that we can use our software to automatically combine maps that have been created um, from different scans, and that's done through an automated process. Another great feature of Hovermap is the fact that it's not just a drone payload. So you'll see I've got a handle on this one. We have a quick re release mechanism, so you can clip it off the drone, clip on a handle, and then take it for a walk. Um, stick it on a backpack, mount it to a vehicle. I've been mountain biking with this. Um, pretty much attached to anything, and you can go around and map. And just to demonstrate that, I, I took it for a quick walk around uh, the hall yesterday morning while we were setting up. Um, so you can see a quick overview of the hall. This was done in less than 10 minutes of just walking around with the device. Um, again, no, obviously no GPS indoors. And you can see the level of detail that's collected in such a short uh, period of time. So I walked around the hall and then came walking around the booth. And you might recognize some of the features um, in the booth. Obviously, we were setting up at the time, so there were a couple of la ladders, etc. But it uh, gives you an idea of what's, what's possible. So um, in terms of autonomy, um, again, being in this environment might be familiar with concepts of levels of autonomy for autonomous driving, um, going from no autonomy, where a uh, you know, human driver is in full control of the vehicle, all the way through to full autonomy, where the driver is not needed at all. So in the drone space, we can, we can map this across to similar levels of autonomy. And again, the concept is having a drone which requires the pilot in control all the time without any assistance from a system, all the way through to a fully autonomous um, solution. So we, we recognize that there are um, needs for both and for different uh, sort of positions along the scale. So Hovermap does allow an operator to control the, the drone but have assistance from Hovermap. So it allows a line of sight flight, um, just helping an operator to keep the drone safe, all the way through to fully autonomous flights where the operator is not needed at all. So in, in the first mode, what we call pilot assist mode, like I said, it, it creates this virtual bubble around the drone. So if you're flying to inspect a bridge or a tower, it doesn't let you get too close. If you fly underneath the bridge or inside an uh, indoor environment, you don't have GPS, hover map keeps the drone safe and stable. And this feature was launched with the device uh, over a year ago. This video just shows uh, this level one autonomy in action. A um, couple of quick examples. In this case, the pilot is on the sticks, and he's trying to fly the drone into a couple of obstacles like trees. And like I said, you can change the size of this bubble depending on how close you want to get. In this case, we had it set to about five meters. And because that, that bubble is omnidirectional, even if you're flying forwards, backwards, up, down, it doesn't matter. It will keep the drone safe. So if we're doing asset inspection, like I said, for inspecting cell phone towers or bridges, for the pilot, it's really challenging to judge your standoff distance. With this device on the drone, you simply set your radius, and you can be guaranteed that you're not going to get too close to the structure that you're trying to fly and inspect. While uh, operating the system, we have a UI which shows you some information about proximity, so how, how close you're getting to the, uh, the obstacles. And we can also stream live video from the drone as well to um, give you a, a heads up what's, uh, what the drone is seeing. In autonomous mode, um, this is where the pilot is uh, not in the loop. And we have a number of ways of operating the drone. One is what we call tap to fly. So as the drone is flying, it's streaming a live preview map to the operator. And you're simply tapping waypoints on a tablet. And the drone then self-navigates to those waypoints. Um, if it gets into trouble or is running low on battery, it will do an intelligence return to home and find its way home and land safely. And this capability allows the drone to fly beyond line of sight where you can't see the drone anymore. So um, it's pretty hard to, to show this for real when we're in an underground mine, for example. So this simulation environment uh, demonstrates how this, how this autonomy works. So on the left-hand side, you can see the point cloud or a low-resolution version of the point cloud being generated as the drone is navigating a tunnel environment. And the purple path segment is what it's generating to plan its next move. Um, it's trying to reach a waypoint off in the distance, and it's building up the map as it goes, generating these small segments of uh, paths as it goes to try and reach that goal. 
So the, the key use cases for Hovermap are really around um, surveying, so mapping areas, inspection, getting up close to things to inspect them, often with a camera on board the drone as well, and generating as-built or digital twins of, of uh, assets. And like I said, Hovermap really shines in these complex 3D environments where there's no GPS. So one key uh, use case that we've been focusing on is underground mining. Um, like you can see, underground mines are pretty harsh environments. Um, many places in these mines that are too dangerous to send people, um, but they still need to map them. There's very valuable data that needs to be collected. So obviously you wouldn't want to send a person in and a natural alternative to, uh, to enter these areas. Um, typically, some of these areas are surveyed using uh, survey techniques, which are, uh, requires the surveyor to get close to these very unstable, dangerous areas and put a, a LIDAR into the, an area called the Stope, for example. So with the drone, we avoid this. We, uh, we launch the drone from a safe position, allow it to fly autonomously into these big voids underground, map it completely, and then return back to the, the surveyor. So this is a, an example flight in a, in a drone, um, in a mine. So this was done in September 2017. Um, and this was the world's first autonomous beyond line of sight flight in a mine by a drone. And the drone flew for around 10 minutes. And we couldn't see it, had no communication with it. Flew around in this underground void, um, mapping autonomously to collect this data. And as you can see, the data is pretty astounding. When we show this to the, the mine surveyors, they're just blown away by the level of detail and uh, how complete the data is. Um, the tower's not actually in the mine, that's just for, for size reference. Um, but yeah, this is really, really valuable for data for the underground miners to use to assess what's going on in that environment and uh, improve safety uh, in the mine. Um, obviously, the system can be used to explore mine tunnels as well. While it's flying, it's constantly scanning the environment for, for obstacles. In this case, we, we put an obstacle in the way just to demonstrate the collision avoidance capability. It's picked up the chain. Um, as the, the obstacle is removed, it will carry on in its paths. So with, with the Velodyne LiDAR, we can pick up wires of around two, three millimeters when we're flying a few meters per second in these environments. Another example, um, flying in a, in a mine in Africa. Um, this is using our pilot-assisted mode. So the pilot is uh, on the controls, sending it into the void that we're having a lot of um, mapping previously. So a five-minute flight in an environment like this generates tens of millions of points um, for them uh, to allow them to accurately measure the volumes of, these, of this area. So just to give you a bit of scale, uh, that's a 90-meter stope. There's a people right at the top. Um, and uh, that was done in a couple of minutes of flying. So this animation is another example of an underground uh, stope environment. This is done in uh, a, a mine in Montana. And again, they were having troubles uh, mapping these areas. So we sent in the drone um, and mapped the stope again in a matter of minutes. Um, and this, the value of this was, again, enormous for, for that mining customer. Here you can actually see the drone's flight path. So we launched from, from below. Set a waypoint halfway up the stope. The drone flew in autonomously up and down and ma mapped that in, in a matter of minutes. So just a side-by-side -side comparison to see how much difference this really makes. Um, so on the left, you'll see the kind of data the surveyors are used to getting from their traditional survey technique. And on the right, you'll see what we get from, uh, from hover maps. So orders of magnitude, more data, um, complete coverage. There's no missing data, and that's a key for them. If there's any gaps in the data, they have to make assumptions about what's actually there. Um, this is another example which shows incredible detail and What's really interesting about this one is the, um, the rock structures that are visible. Um, I'll just skip through. So if uh, the, the geotechs or geotechnical engineers need to understand what's happening in the rock mass um, to make sure that the mine is safe, and using this, uh, the, the scan data, they can pick up these natural structures in the rock which allow them to assess how safe this environment is and plan how to support the ground or if they're going to do more blasting, make sure they're blasting in an appropriate way so they don't create rock falls. And again, this was a scan done in approximately five minutes of flying. We flew in from the bottom, we flew in from the top, combined the data together to generate this really incredible rich data for underground mining. A um, couple of examples of flying in, in tunnel environments underground. Again, there might be 
areas which are off limits in a mining environment. It might be a search and rescue uh, scenario where they don't want to send people. Um, so you could send the drone carrying cameras, carrying gas sensors, carrying thermal cameras to look for, for survivors. So using this capability, we've also been involved in uh, the latest DARPA challenge. Um, so DARPA famously set up the autonomous driving challenges back in around 2004, and that really spearheaded the autonomous driving market today. Um, recently, well, a year ago, they launched what's called the subterranean challenge. And the, the idea is here to explore subterranean environments autonomously with a team of robots to locate features of interest. Um, and again, you know, this is going to spearhead autonomous navigation in GPS denied environments. Because we're already working in the space, we're accepted into the program and we've been competing um, in the challenge. And the first uh, contest event was in August last year in a mine in Pittsburgh. And so we, we teamed up with the robotics group that we were previously part of from CSIRO, a research organization in Australia. And they developed the ground vehicles, also using Velodyne LiDARs um, to do slam-based navigation and mapping. So the first ground vehicle has gone out and it's laying down communication network. Um, so there's an operator at the entrance to the mine who's seeing this data come back in real time via this comms network. And then he's able to launch the drone at a press of a button and give it a waypoint in the map that he sees on his control. Um, drone goes in, flying autonomously with these waypoints that have been provided by the operator. And in real time, the drone and ground ro robots are sharing the map information and building a common map. Um, so we can, can use that to explore these under underground environments. So if, as one of the, one of the um, uh, runs that we did in that competition, we explored more than 250 meters down a drive and automatically managed to um, locate and identify a number of features of interest and score points. Like I said, it can be used as a handheld mapping device. And again, here's another mining example where hover map's been used off the drone just by attaching the handle and taking it for a walk. This is a, a crusher environment underground where they actually crush the rocks. And again, it, it shows the level of detail that can be captured in around 10 minutes of walking around in an environment like this. So for them to capture as built information at, the, in, at that speed and at this level of detail is really, really valuable. If they need to plan what to, what to do in that environment, if they put in some new equipment or if they want to generate a digital twin, um, they can walk around in a matter of minutes and capture that 3D data. It can also be mounted to a vehicle. Um, this is just one, one way of doing it with a suction cup mount. Again, a mining environment. Here we mounted to the vehicle, went driving around in these underground mine tunnels. And again, with, within minutes, are able to map huge portions of the underground mine. They can use this data to, again, assess safety. They need to um, check if the, uh, the mine tunnels are squeezing in and if they've got put the right amount of rock support in. When they automate their mining vehicles, they also need as built or a plan of uh, where the tunnels go. So we can use this data for that and a host of other applications. You can also do some crazy things. So this is uh, an early prototype mounted to the front of an autonomous dozer. So there's an operator sort of driving this fly-by-wire off in the distance, sending the dozer into an area where it's too dangerous to, to enter. And this is just purely acting as a mapping payload at this point. It's not controlling the dozer. But um, it was a very unique use case. And you can see how challenging these environments can be underground. So even with all that shaking around, vibrating, it gen still generated um, perfect maps for them. Um, another application is scanning vertical shafts. So we don't always have to send the drone into these areas. Uh, another way we can do it is using a, a cable. Um, in this case, we, they were inspecting this vertical shaft with a, with a camera system on a cable. So we just zip tied hover map to the end of the cable, dropped it down 500 meters, and scanned the entire shaft for them. Um, and the value here is, is this what they call overbreak. You can see that that should be a smooth shaft, but there are areas that are breaking away, and that's causing big problems in the mine and it's uh, a very expensive problem to, fo to solve. So again, within about 20 minutes of scanning, we scanned that shaft for them. They could identify where the overbreak was and how to remedy it. Another interesting thing that uh, sort of side effect we, we, uh, we notice is when we color the point clouds by the LIDAR intensity, we can pick up geolo ge geological structures as well and that also helps to educate them about what's happening underground. So that's the area that's really overbreaking in the mine, and that's uh, something they're going to have to, to remedy. And that's looking back up from that overbreak. Um, this is another example where we drop the sensor down into one of these um, 
shafts in a mine. And again, this overbreak area is uh, obviously v very obvious. They pour rocks down these chutes to be collected at the bottom, but the rocks break the, the, the shaft larger and larger until it can't be used anymore. So hover map can obviously be used on the surface as well, um, just, as, just as well as uh, below. And applications for surface mining are flying around their large infrastructure and plant to inspect them or generate as builds. Um, here's an example flying around to do an inspection. Uh, like I said, in many cases, the inspection is a visual inspection, so they're capturing high-resolution images. But what Hovermap does is allow the, the drone operator to fly with confidence up close to these structures without getting too close. Um, because we're using the LiDAR data for navigation, we're not relying on GPS, and we're not relying on board the, the magnetometers on board. Um, usually, when you fly a drone close to large metal structures, the, the magnetometers can be interfered with. Um, using the SLAM navigation, we don't have that problem, so we can fly safely close to these large metal structures. And again, you can see the level of detail that we can generate from uh, the Velodyne 16 puck. This is the kind of easy stuff, so flying around above ground, mapping stockpiles. Um, there are other solutions out there can do it. Hover map can do it uh, just as well. Um, generating, again, like I said, very accurate uh, volume estimates and inspecting these large infrastructures and plant. Another interesting use case is mapping of stockpiles indoors. So in some applications, you don't put your stockpile out, outdoors um, in the weather, store it inside a shed where it's protected, um, especially if very valuable stockpiles. So this is a, a mine in South Africa where we went and uh, um, mapped their stockpile for them. Again, GPS denied environment. Um, so it's usually flying a drone inside an environment like this would be very challenging. If you take your hands off the control, usually a, dro a drone will just drift because it's got no reference uh, for its position and velocity. In this case, the pilots flew around for less than five minutes, and you can see the, the detail that was captured in that short flight to, to measure these stockpiles um, in an indoor environment. You can also use uh, hover map for, map for the energy in, um, industry, mapping substations, um, like this large one in, in Japan. This was done with a combination of flying and walking. So basically flew around some of the taller structures, and then while this, the system was still scanning, took it off the drone and walked around inside some of the tighter spaces in, this, in, the, in the substation. Um, this again is an example of generating a, a detailed as-built map in a matter of min minutes. This is a pump station at a hydro plant. And again, five minutes of flying indoors to capture this level of detail um, and for an as-built application. So from this they can generate the digi digital twin, um, decide if they, where things might fit for uh, for retrofitting or, or making alterations. And that's the hydro part of the hydro station as well. You can also map dams. Um, and what's interesting again with the LIDAR intensity values flying around concrete structures like this, we can actually see degradation in the concrete. So you can see the, the false coloring by LIDAR intensity starts to show up some of these defects in the, in the concrete structure as well. And that's just a section through the dam wall. Um, mapping of uh, electrical infrastructure. Obviously, inspecting towers is critical. They're going to need to make sure they're not corroding, um, that the, the insulators are not, uh, not failing, and that the power lines are not getting too close to vegetation. So that's a key application, is to map the trees and the power lines to make sure they're not, not getting too close. In the oil and gas field, also many applications, again, for generating um, as-builds, very detailed as-builds. This is an exploration drill rig um, in Europe. Uh, it was in dock for some retrofitting, so we took the opportunity to both fly and walk around it. Um, around 30 minutes of flying and around 25 minutes of walking, and again, we automatically merged those data sets together to generate one uh, 3D point cloud. And again, having that level of detail in such a short time is really valuable for these, for these customers. And in this case, our customer managed to map an entire oil refine or oil terminal. Again, within uh, within a day, this is about a combination of ten uh, scans, both walking and flying, to map this uh, oil refinery terminal. And we can even fly inside these liquid storage tanks. So this is a an example of uh, where we took a drone, like the one you see up there, flew around inside this liquid storage tank for around five minutes, and was able to generate an accurate as built. Again, GPS-denied environments, a lot of metal structure that would usually interfere with uh, drone navigation.
but with Hovermap on board, it makes, uh, made this flight really simple and easy to do for, for the operator. A couple more oil and gas examples. Um, and then transport. So bridges are also uh, commonly inspected by drones. I have a lot of uh, programs using drones to, to do inspect bridges, especially in Japan. And the challenge is flying underneath these structures is really difficult for the pilot to, to judge this, the distance from the drone to the bridge. Obviously, it's a GPS denied environment, and they need to inspect it in, in a lot of detail. So with Hovermap on board, it allows the um, operator to fly with confidence underneath these structures, both to generate the 3D point clouds using the LiDAR and to capture high resolution images um, with a camera on board the drone. Rail is another use case. So we have a number of customers who are using Hovermap to map rail infrastructure. Again, this is to look for a couple of things if they want to um, make any modifications. Um, this is a, a very quick way of generating an as-built of uh, the rail environment. This is a walking scan, about 20 minutes of walking around this uh, train station in, in Sydney in Australia. And again, you can see the level of detail that's captured in such a quick uh, space of time. Uh, communications towers, another application. Um, again, drones are being w widely used to inspect cell phone towers. Um, the challenge, again, is flying close to, to structures, um, especially metal ones that can interfere with the drones. The antennas can interfere with the drone RC signal. So having a hover map on board allows the operator to, to keep that safe distance from the, the tower and generate these um, really detailed as-built uh, point clouds in, in a matter of minutes. Another interesting use case is cultural heritage. Um, so this is a, a statue in Indonesia. I think it's the third largest statue in the world. It's, it's 30 meters taller than the, Empire, than the uh, Statue of Liberty. Um, so they set about to, to map this again with a, a drone using Hovermap. Hovermap was keeping the drone safe from the structure. Um, the operator was flying in now level one autonomy mode up and down um, the faces. So it did four flights, one on each side of the, of the structure. And, um, use that to generate this as built. I'll skip through to the point cloud. So again, you can see um, amazing level of detail throughout the structure. They also took it off the drone and they walked around in the bottom lower part of this, the statue. Um, and we've combined all that data, five data sets into one to give a complete uh, model of this uh, cultural heritage site. Recently, we've been getting into to forestry as well. Um, drones have been used in forestry for a while to fly over the top of forests to, to map the canopies. Um, so we've flown over the top of, of this forest with, with hover map, and then again taken it off the drone and taken it for a walk through the forest. And this is really useful for mapping forestry inventory. So they need to assess how well the forest's doing, um, what the carbon sequestration is, so how much carbon this, this area of forest can capture. They need to measure details like the, the uh, diameter of, the, of each tree at chest height to, to estimate how, how much wood there is, basically. So it's a very manual process. can be done um, by walking, um, but in many cases the terrain is really challenging and steep and there's a lot of undergrowth, so it's not safe to walk underneath the forests. So we've been doing some trials with uh, autonomous flight um, below the canopy. And again, this is a challenging environment. It's GPS denied. Um, and there's obviously a lot of obstacles. So by flying around underneath the canopy, we can capture this detailed uh, point cloud information for the forestry managers. And in this case, the operator was simply just setting waypoints on, that, on our tablet application, and the drone was self-navigating, avoiding the trees to reach those waypoints. And it's uh, just a quick animation of the point cloud that was generated from, from that flight. So you can see the flight line as the, the drone was navigating between the trees, and you can see the level of detail captured um, in the LIDAR point cloud, which allows him to take those key measurements that they need uh, for forestry management. A couple more snapshots of other forests we've mapped. And this is something I just did for fun while we were in New Zealand. I uh, took the payload for a, a walk through these uh, giant redwoods and uh, just captured some, some cool imagery. Um, uh, yeah, I love the, the effect that the point cloud gives in these natural environments. And you can get an idea of the scale is uh, somebody hugging the tree. Um, but yeah, some amazing data that can be captured just by walking around with the Hovermap payload. Um, we've also been using Hovermap for construction. We've been flying outside buildings, so to capture 
the facades um, during the construction phase, but there's also a, a use case for, for flying inside the building during construction to generate an as-built and to monitor the, the progress of the construction. Again, challenging environment for drones, it's GPS denied, um, number of obstacles, um, but using the hover map payload, we can safely fly the drone around in these environments. This entire flight was done with an operator simply tapping those waypoints on the, on the tablet as the map was streamed back to him, and um, the drone was able to navigate around these obstacles <coughs> through, through that interface. And again, from, from that sort of 10 minutes of flying, this is just a, a small section of the point cloud that was generated um, in this environment. Again, so for construction monitoring, another really useful uh, use case to be able to map indoors and outdoors uh, with the drone. This is another interesting um, use case for mapping um, indoors and outdoors or above ground and below ground. This is a, a metro station in uh, Stuttgart in Germany where again I just took off a map for a walk along the street level and then went down into the subways and uh, walked along the, the, the platforms and generated this complete as built um, of a section of the metro station. So if we're doing city planning um, and understanding where subterranean infrastructure is, it's a very useful uh, tool as well. Um, Hover map can also be used for, for terrain mapping. Like I said, this is kind of the easy stuff that uh, many drone-based LiDAR solutions can be used for. Um, Hover map provides that sort of slam-based mapping solution and generates a, really, a, a lot of detail. And uh, I think one of the, the keys to the, the, the level of detail um, is the, the fact that we do rotate the LiDAR. And this really ensures that we're spraying points in all directions at the same time. And it allows the, the LiDAR to poke through all the little gaps and, and very, give a really detailed, complete picture couple more terrain mapping examples. This is part of the coastline of uh, Melbourne, um, Great Ocean Road, and they're monitoring this for erosion. Um, it's called the 12 Apostles. I think there are only five or six left, and they are being eroded away. Um, and this is an area where they're putting a, a visitor's platform above this large uh, uh, blowhole in the same area, and they needed to go underneath and map it to make sure it was going to be safe to um, erect this platform. So some other things that hover map has been used for recently, if you've seen the latest Star Wars, you might, uh, you might recognize a sort of desert scenery. So hover map was used by Industrial Light and Magic to map um, the sets, especially this one. So those that sort of the, the rocks in the background and this uh, desert environment, hover map was flown by a drone mapping company. And the, the 3D data was provided to Industrial Light and Magic and their CGI specialists used that to create the, the digital backdrop uh, for the CGI effects. It's also recently been used in the latest James Bond film and uh, Fast and Furious 9, I think it is. So another really useful application for drone-based LiDAR mapping. Um, the LiDAR by itself provides us range information and intensity values. It doesn't provide real color. So we do have the option of attaching a camera, a GoPro in this case, and we record the GoPro video and the LiDAR data and then we can fuse the two to provide a colorized point cloud. And adding color does make the point clouds look, uh, look prettier, but it has value in other areas as well. If, if you need to find all the red pipes in a building, for example, you can use that color information to, um, to extract that, uh, that information. So in summary, I suppose some of the, the, the benefits of, of hover map, um, it really increases safety when you're using drones um, in challenging environments. Uh, you don't need to get operators close to these hazardous environments. Um, the, it's really efficient to use, um, quick to set up and to go and scan, and it really is an easy system. Literally plug it on, press the button, and it makes the drone flight really safe and easy. Um, it's an extremely versatile system, being able to be used both on the drone or off the drone, mounted on other vehicles or um, as a handheld system, and allows you to capture data in places that you otherwise wouldn't be able to access. Um, in the mining context, it reduces what they call shadowing, so it fills in all the gaps, makes sure there aren't any uh, missing uh, pieces of data, um, and it generates these really dense, detailed point clouds because of the, the data rate of the, the VLP-16 and the fact that it's rotating. So just a, a, a snapshot of some of our, our track record. Um, the system is being used commercially in, in mines around the world now. We've done thousands of autonomous, uh, hours of autonomous flights, and um, used by some of the biggest mining customers around the world daily in their mines. 
and we're uh, growing our distribution network around the world. Um, have a couple in, in the US already, but we are um, expanding um, and growing that network. And also a quick plug that we are hiring. So if you want to come and uh, enjoy the scenery in, in sunny Brisbane, it's not burning at the moment, thank God, but uh, it's a great place to, to live and to work. So just a, a quick plug. Um, thanks very much. Appreciate your time.